Good morning, Valley. Today on Valley Por Vida, we've got a lot in store for you. We'll be checking in with our friends over at Behavioral Health so uh, Services at Texas to learn about how we can keep our teenagers safe from alcohol abuse and addiction this summer. Now, we've got helpful information on fibromyalgia awareness that can help keep you or a family member safe. Plus, we are hitting the water for Port Aransas to check out some exciting activities this summer. There is so much going on, so don't go anywhere. Valley Por Vida starts right now. Hi there, and thanks again for joining us this morning. I'm your host, Danielle Bonda. Well, Behavioral Health Solutions is a nonprofit center for integrated prevention, intervention, treatment, recovery, and research. Their team's coalition and youth group is dedicated to changing the lives of teens for the better, especially when it comes to alcohol and addiction. And our team spoke with them for a peek at what that entails. So go ahead and take a look. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Bianca Vieira. I am the Unidad Coalition Coordinator, and I'm also the coordinator for the United Youth Group, which is a youth group form up of students and youth ages 12 to 17 from Hidalgo County. So through the Unidad Coalition and through our youth group, we focus primarily on prevention of substance use. This would be underage drinking, prescription drugs, marijuana, and tobacco products. Both are used in adult programs or members um, really focus on educating our community, on empowering youth to make good decisions, and also teaching parents how they can better assist their children and addressing these issues that are so important for us in our community. Through our youth group, um, they've, they've really kind of like taken on this role of addressing all the issues that they feel that, they, that they've had a need for during this pandemic, especially. Um, We've wanted our youth group to be a safe space for them to be able to discuss things that you know are important to them and that they want to they're, they're curious about that they want to learn different perspectives on. So um, you know we've talked about stress, we've talked about time management, we've talked about things going on in our, in our world, um, and all of those things have really helped us out and helped them out to kind of figure out you know, um, what they think about certain stuff. Um, they just want to be able to have a space to discuss and to learn and to feel like they're, you know, being accepted. Um, that has empowered them to do all these different activities that they've done on a social distance virtual level. Um, throughout the year, they've done community engagement events, just promoting, you know, hanging out with family, going out to the park, um, doing um, active, things that are going to be helpful and it's what we call protective factors. Having these different things in, our, in the life of a teenager um, really kind of helps them to bond with their family and also empowers them to like, hey, you know what, I, I can make health decisions. I don't need alcohol and drugs to help me cope with what's going on. I have friends that I can talk to or I know how to how to deal with this situation in a healthy manner. And that's primarily their goal. They want teens to know that you don't need alcohol and any other drug to, to help you deal with what's going on. Um, you know, they, they have each other, they have each other as a group, but it's also like letting other teens know, hey, you know, your community's here, whether it's by sharing, they did positive prevention rocks, where they were putting out prevention messages at with rocks at different parks. So it's like, you know, if, if you ever come across that rock, it's like a positive message in that moment that, you know, maybe somebody needed. Um, they've also had different events where people can kind of share their thoughts about something, like maybe you've had somebody around you, close to you, that smokes, and that, you know, you, you feel a certain way about it. So they've had the, the opportunity for people to kind of express themselves as to how that makes it feel, partially because some of our youth group members also deal with similar things. Like at the end of the day, they're not exempt from what's going on just because they're part of our youth group. So our goal is just to kind of help them guide them through that or just being there for them um, and what they need during those moments.
There you have it. The Behavioral Health Solutions team and youth group is dedicated to keeping our RGB communities united, strong, and drug-free. And if you'd like to lend support for your, uh, their mission, you can go ahead and visit bhsst.org. All right, well, did you know that fibromyalgia affects more than 4 million Americans? That's about 2% of the adult population in the United States. And even though this disease affects such a large number of individuals, it's still a rather misunderstood illness that many don't know how to approach effectively. So with May being Fibromyalgia Awareness Month, it's a great time to talk about the different ways to help people feel better. And we went ahead and spoke with an expert to learn more. Hey everyone, Jaya Jaya Myra here. Good morning, hope everyone's having a great day. It is Fibromyalgia Awareness Month and I wanna share some of my top tips for dealing with fibromyalgia and chronic pain naturally. So I have five primary tips that you consider for reducing chronic pain. Tip number one is to ditch the dairy. Dairy is actually a highly inflammatory food and inflammation is one of the primary causes of chronic pain in the body. So if you can re replace dairy products with a non-dairy alternative, this is apt to reduce those aches and pains in the body naturally and enable you to get back to a place of feeling great. Tip number two is to ditch the refined sugars. Sugar is also highly, highly inflammatory and we have tons of other options, be that coconut palm sugar, uh, non-refined sugars, maybe you're getting a turbinado sugar, just try to stay away from that processed white sugar and that is also going to help to reduce pain that you may be experiencing. So along with the sugar comes processed food, so make sure to like look at what you're consuming, maybe make some stuff at home on your own naturally. This is going to reduce your pain naturally and you're apt to feel a lot better. Tip number three is to just eat more anti-inflammatory foods in general. So I'm sure by now you're seeing this trend here. Inflammation is the cause of a lot of this pain in the body. And it's also linked to depression and sadness and just that general brain fog and lethargy that people with fibromyalgia face. So when you can eat more anti-inflammatory foods, things like turmeric, which the primary ingredient is curcumin, so maybe you've seen curcumin supplements. Ginger also contains a lot of curcumin. Anything that's anti-inflammatory, maybe even something like cilantro, this can help to reduce that inflammation and reduce those pains naturally as well. There's a whole host of foods out there, so do some exploration on your own, but those are my three top favorites, turmeric, ginger, and cilantro. Tip number four, consume adequate fiber daily. So fiber is a prebiotic, AKA it's food for your microbiome in your gut. So if you've heard of probiotics, that is your microbiome. But you need fiber to feed them, just like we need food to feed us. So by having adequate daily fiber, you are helping to support the gut-brain axis connection, which also has the ability to reduce inflammation and improve mood uh, and help you feel better and do a whole host of other things as well. So consume your fiber daily so that your probiotics and microbiome have adequate nourishment and you stay in optimum health. Tip number five, diversify your microbiome. So now maybe that means taking a pre, or sorry, a probiotic supplement. Maybe that means just eating some more foods that have those probiotics in them. Things like kefir, yogurt, you can find these in vegan non-dairy options, uh, sauerkraut, kimchi. All these things are gonna help to diversify the microbiome. Even apples and apple seeds contain a, a lot of probiotics inside of them. So by diversifying your microbiome, you're also strengthening that gut-brain connection. You're gonna help to reduce pain naturally, boost mood, elevate those hormones that naturally boost your mood, and just help you to feel better. So you can find more information on my website, jayajayamira.com, and from my most recent book, The Soul of Purpose, there's an entire chapter in there about diet and food for mood and how to reduce pain and improve your life naturally. Now she says meditation is a great way to bring the sympathetic and parasympathetic system back into balance. And if you'd like more information on how to battle this chronic pain, feel free to visit the website on your screen. All right, well, it's time now to take a commercial break, and then we've got to look at your local weather updates. But be sure to stay tuned because Valley Por Vida will be back. And we'll be visiting a fisherman's hotspot down in Port Mansfield. And if you're a fan of the outdoors, you'll definitely want to check that out. We've got that info and more coming up.